One, two, the cut down. Nikon, as we like to mention here in this side of the world, but of the other people in the parts of the world like to call them Nikon. We'll let them have that. Have done a development announcement of their super flagship Z9 camera. And this is looking to be a direct punch up against what Sony have announced with their Alpha One, the A1, the One, the Neo. And this is Nikon's or Nikon's potential answer to it. Not much details, but what's been put out there, especially when it's official enough, and we did this with the R5 series when Canon went through the development process and building up to what was a interesting outcome with the R series, with the 5 and the 6. Will it be the same for the Z9? Will it live up to it? Will this be the awakening that we've been waiting for when it comes to what Nikon have needed to do to really, really compete? Z9. Yes, people, Z. Some people like to say Z9, but it's Z. An unprecedented imaging experience. Okay, bold statement. Nikon is proud. Nikon is proud to announce the development of the Z9, the first flagship model for the Z mount. Z mount was obviously their mirrorless mounting system, which is different to their F mount that was on their DSLR system. Now this is on their DSLM. Bringing together the most um, exceptional groundbreaking technologies, the Z9 delivers the best stills and video performance in Nikon's history. Highlighting our commitment to the professionals behind the lens, the Z9 is designed to help you create the most compelling images. And what we are looking at is a newly developed F x format stacked cmos sensor wow that's definitely from sony that is not from nikon that is not from them finally a new imaging processing engine thank goodness not the lazy effort of just adding two processors I actually put research and development into a new processing um platform and 8k uhd video recording 8k is the current buzzword and i think when you're shooting high resolution we are looking at the 8k you need about 3.4 megapixels this is at least a 45 megapixel sensor 100 if it's not 50 megapixels like what you find in the a1 from sony then this is yeah so right, let's see what's this okay Marvel, new york Pleased to announce the development of the first flagship model for the Z mount has been adopted. The Nikon Z9, a full frame Nikon FX format mirrorless camera, is scheduled to be released in 2021. Wow, okay, this year. And represents a significant. So we, we should be looking at a three year, a three month outlook on when this will be released. Okay, a significant leap in technology brings together groundbreaking technologies to deliver the best stills and video performance in Nikon's history, meet the advanced needs of professionals in a whole wide genre. Utilizes the new development. Yep. Okay, cool. It, 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 it includes and supports, again, I'm guessing up to 4K UHD 30 frames a second. I don't believe it's going to be any higher than that, which it doesn't need to be for first generation. Goodness. Um, oh, okay. And this is all we know so far. And what we also know as well is the look of the camera body. It has an integrated grip. It's not a separate grip. It's an integrated grip. And this is something that a lot of the previous pro level photographers that were using DSLRs have wanted from the mirrorless line, at least a pro, a true pro level camera that has an integrated built in grip. No wonder you attach, but a true integrated to give that familiar size of in hand feel, like what you get of the 1DX series and the D6 series from Nikon and, and, and Canon. And it's something that's been sorely lacking. And Nikon are putting their foot forward to be like, yo, we're going to answer that question first. You've been waiting for Sony to do it. They ain't been doing it. We've been waiting for Canon to do it. They ain't been doing it. We're going to do it first. That's a big plus. That's a big plus. And the F to Z um, uh, 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 adapters, uh, it says a very, very compelling option. Let's do a quick fire one. You all know me, I love my cameras. Anything when it comes to video production, predominantly, I love my cameras. And I'm going to share some positives and what I like that Nikon have done from previous to now. 
even with the weird update that they did with the Z6 Mark II and the Z7 II, yes, those cameras did get 4K UHD 60 frames a second. Yes, those cameras did get updated support for ProRes RAW with much more control in the editing pipeline. And on top of that, what people miss about the Z6 II and the Z7 II is the fact that they are the only mirrorless cameras outside of the Blackmagic family that support Blackmagic RAW external recording to Blackmagic video assist recorders. So they're the only cam, they're one of the only cameras that can actually shoot ProRes RAW and Blackmagic RAW at the same time, depending on what external recorder that you're pushing out via their um, HDMI out, which I believe is mini and not micro. I hope it's not micro. What are some of the downs downsides? The internal codex not being as strong, still 8-bit. For you to get 10-bit, you need to be using external recorders. Lack of all intra, still long up, still, you know, um, what do you call it? Um, IPB codex. Biggest pet peeve for me, anyone that knows me, my biggest problem with any camera that touts any form of, I'm doing a lot of video, 30 minute record limit. I despise any camera trying to do any form of video and boasting about videos, but yeah, you cannot remove that tedious 30 minute recording limit. And this is something that still plagued the Z6 II and the Z7 II. This is something that still plagues Canon cameras. The only manufacturer that seems to be really patterning up and listening from what they used to do before and fixing it with their new generation is Sony. Cameras like the GH5S and the GH5, and the G they've been doing unlimited recording from time when these micro four thirds cameras as hybrid shooters were doing from back in the day, from 2017, five years to four years on, the G, the, the, the G85 and the G, G90, depending, G85 and G80, depending on what region it is, no recording limits. Recording limits just need to go. If you really want to be classing these cameras, and Sony did it, Sony's A1 shoots up to 4K UHD, 30 frames a second, 40, 0, 10 bit, internal with no recording limit, 200 and 400 megabits per second data rate in H.265 compression technique. No, compression codec. Apologies. And it's using a full size HDMI port. There's things that this needs to do. It needs to have a full size HDMI port. It needs to be able to remove the recording limit and it needs to give you stronger internal codec options. Look how much internal codecs when it comes to the video that you've got with the A1. It's basically an A7S III, but in high resolution that shoots 8K and it's near enough the same quality, full size HDMI. And it's HDMI 2.1, bear I mind you. So it's pushing out 16 bit when it comes to RAW, bringing it down to 12. So the new generation recorders that will be able to have proper HDMI 2.1 record and um, recording are going to be able to shoot high frame rate up to 4K UHD externally and take advantage of the full 16 bit RAW workflow. That's what people are not thinking. It needs to have that same level of future compatibility. But if this is what they bring in, yeah, for the pro level sports photographers and the fact that it's got a stacked CMOS sensor, like what you're going to be seeing very similar to what you have with the A1, that's going to be a good look in terms of high frame rates. I'm excited to see this, but these are just my initial pet peeves that from the outside looking in, I've, I'm, I, I've, I've not really liked too much about Nikon, but I've also been very impressed when it comes to Nikon in terms of showing the potential. They need to develop more lenses for the Z mount. Yes, the F to Z um, mount adapter is great for the previous F mount lenses that they've got. Not a problem, but they need to develop more native glass. But this is exciting. This is exciting. This is great to see. This is very, very impressive stuff. And I'm liking it. And competition keeps each manufacturer help like honest and on point. And it keeps the development strong. It keeps the R&D strong. It keeps them thinking about unique features so let's see what happens with this development announcement we'll be keeping an eye on this one for the nikon z9